together for us. Well, so many books to read and many of us have all the time to dig into one, but which one? Our Labradorian literature lover, Wayne Button, has been breezing through books and he joins us to get between the pages of some of his latest reads. Good morning, Wayne. Good morning, Janice. How are you doing? I'm not doing too bad. How are you doing? Not bad. Just uh, trying to be productive as possible and uh, trying to get as many books read for you guys as possible. So how many have you read in the last week since we talked to you last? Um, I was near ending one uh, by the last time we talked, and I read another one. So I got two I can read today if you're starting. Well, let's talk about the, the first one. I, I know that you have recently read a couple interesting ones. Which one do you want to start with? Uh, we can start with uh, Homo Deus. And what's that about? Uh, so Homo Deus is um, it's the second part of a book uh, from, he did a series, the last one was called uh, Sapiens. So he talks about the history of humans and Homo Deus Deus is actually Latin for God. So this book, he talks mostly about the evolution of humans and how uh, we're almost going to evolve into, like, super gods, like uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, it's pretty good. I really liked it. It just has a, it's a heavy read. It's not for everybody, but it has a lot of different things in it from philosophy about capitalism, liberalism, but a lot of really cool, interesting science, artificial intelligence uh, stuff as well. So what was it about the book that you found so compelling? Um, just about, well, the scary thing about the book is he basically makes a really good argument about how um, humans or homo sapiens, uh, we've only really been the, you know, evolving uh, species for a couple thousands of years. And, you know, he has a lot of good arguments and statistics to show that eventually our artificial intelligence may take over as the evolving species and we may not be the top of the food chain. Um, so that's pretty scary to think about, but he does have a compelling argument. So that was what was really interesting in the book I found. So who would you recommend read that book, Wayne? It's not for everybody. It's a really heavy read. So it's not like something you want to just pick up and, and read like on a plane, going on vacation, like a good love story or something. Um, so anybody that's really deep into like philosophy, um, you know, sci-fi, futuristic stuff, anybody like that that wants an advanced read about philosophy and stuff, I definitely recommend it. Now, there's another book that you've also read, The Dispossessed by Jeffrey York. What is that one about? Yeah, so a friend of mine recommended this book for me because uh, if you remember when I reviewed another book, I was really looking for something I wanted to learn about uh, indigenous culture and some of the history, but I didn't want like a boring textbook. And one of my friends recommended this to me, and I'm so glad she did, uh, because The Dispossessed, it, although it's a little bit older, it was published in 1990. Uh, what Jeffrey York does is he goes around the entire country and he talks to different uh, native reserves in Manitoba, Alberta, all over the place. And he gives the history of how the reserves started, but also like some of the compelling differences of the reserves. Some of them uh, build their own schools and take their own initiatives and other, you know, battles, stuff like uh, alcoholism and a lot of the reserves deplete while some of the other ones develop. So it's a very good socialist, uh, historical type, uh, interesting read. I got to say, I really liked it. And so you said that that was recommended to you by a friend. What other books are you finding people are recommending these days? Yeah, lots of people will send me stuff, because uh, uh, especially Newfoundland history, because they know I'm interested in Newfoundland history. I just had a friend actually send me an old book. Actually, she recommended an old book uh, about uh, pandemics, actually, and the Canadian public health care system. So I have to look for that. And I have another friend who's clearing out her, her parents' basement with a bunch of old books, and she's sending me all these books uh, recommending that I take a look at them, um, True Stories in Newfoundland. So, yeah, a lot of people will send me stuff, uh, and uh, I'll put it in on my list. And like I said, when I go to Chapters or on Amazon, I'll order a few. So without getting into your review of the current book you're reading and what you're going to be talking about next week, what is the title of what you're currently diving into? I actually haven't picked one yet, uh, so I'm really excited because uh, I get to go on my shelf and decide what I'm going to read next. I just finished The Dispossessed last night, so uh, I haven't picked a new one yet, so I'm excited. We'll see. 
Well, we're excited to see what next week's book is going to be as well. And and before I let you go this morning, uh, we are going to be talking in a moment about different documentaries about uh, sports and basketball specifically. I know you're a sports fan. What is it that you're doing right now to get your sports fix? Well, I mean, there's a lot of old games on TV that you can watch, uh, but haven't been too much. Now, starting Sunday, there's going to be uh, a documentary series released on Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. A lot of people have been waiting for this documentary. It was supposed to come out in June, but they pushed it ahead because they know people are just striving for something sports-related. Uh, so I definitely recommend to take a look at that, although I haven't seen it, but getting great reviews. It's actually 10-part, 10 10-hour 10 documentary on the Chicago Bulls and Michael Jordan. And do you have any sports books that you're recommending? Um, sports books that I'm recommending. Uh, Friday Night Lights is always a good one if someone likes football. I mean, they made a whole show about it and a whole movie about it, uh, but it still holds true. Anybody that likes football definitely want to take a look at Friday Night Lights, I got to say. Well, we'll leave it there for today. Thanks so much, Wayne. No problem. Thanks a lot, Janice. Wayne Button is our book columnist at Labrador Morning.